or cognitive enhancers have increased in popularity amongst university students seeking competitive edge, enhanced focus and productivity. It doesn't just boil down to performing well in that one assessment or subject. The increase is also being driven by the pressure of students to be successful post-university. Students think they are safer than street drugs, but are ignorant about the side effects of prescription medications. These medications can still be highly addictive and create dependence in the user. A smart pill is a drug that increases the cognitive ability of anyone taking it, whether the user is cognitively impaired or not. The most common here in Australia is Ritalin and Dexamphetamine. Study drugs are prescription stimulants like Adderall or Ritalin that are used inappropriately to increase mental focus and productivity for the purpose of study. They are drugs commonly prescribed to treat attention deficit disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Students who take prescription stimulants have a tunnel-like vision. They are not distracted by anything and can read for hours without logging into the social media sites. They feel more interested in the study material and feel like they understand everything on a deeper level. The biggest player in improving ADHD symptoms is a neurotransmitter known as dopamine. Individuals with ADHD are suggested to have a dopamine dysfunction, thus lacking the normal levels of this essential neurotransmitter. When an individual takes drugs such as Ritalin, the MPH acts as a norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor. With this comes a modulation of the norepinephrine and dopamine. The norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor increases the amount of norepinephrine and dopamine neurotransmitters in the brain by partially blocking DAT, inhibiting it from completely removing the dopamine from the synapse. This ultimately increases attention and motivation whilst decreasing distractibility and motor hyperactivity, hence its use as a study drug. Subjects are able to consume more information in less time than are usually required. Studies suggest that academic doping is more prevalent here than in the US or in Europe. 8% of students have taken the drug. High pressure degrees such as law and medicine have a much higher use rate than other faculties. This, in comparison to the US stats, 1 in 5 students are reporting to use a drug to pull on nighters. I was studying 40 plus hours a week, so I needed to rely on these drugs to pull an all nighter. They actually helped a lot. I was able to get everything done. I guess the problem is the focus can be directed at whatever it is in front of you at the time. I was inside my house on my computer and I ended up rearranging my iTunes library for five hours, which is not super productive. So there are two ways to obtain study drugs. You can either get a prescription or you can make friends with someone who has a prescription and who is willing to sell out their medication. Neither of these two options is particularly challenging. Many young adults have also been known to fake ADHD symptoms to get study prescriptions from doctors. The demand has become so high that students are now turning to the internet to buy these study drugs online. Individuals buying these drugs over the net from places like Singapore think it's safe, saying they're in blister packs though, you know, they look real. Although smart drugs increase short-term brain performance, yeah. there are also some long-term negative factors that need to be addressed. Increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, increased body temperature, this thing called a twilight zone where kids have been awake for an extended period of time but um, they don't feel like they can go to sleep. Hallucinations and delusions, um, hyperactivity, excitability, irritability, um, you know, blurred vision, like headaches, dizziness, nausea, anxiety, depression. There are some serious long-term side effects as well which haven't quite been well established. <laughs> According to a 2005 study, teens who abuse prescription drugs are 12 times more likely to use heroin, 15 times more likely to use ecstasy, and 20 times more likely to use cocaine compared to teens who do not abuse such drugs. People who use these drugs only on occasion to study are much more likely to crash once the drug is worn off because the body's energy supplies and the dopamine have all been used up. There are also issues concerning the way students mix their drugs or the use of recreational drugs and alcohol when they socialise with their friends, a cocktail which can be dangerous. The problem that we face, which has already been addressed by a professor at Sydney University, is that there's been no open dialogue about the issue, which means that there's been no systemic investigation into what's been happening. So I had this friend Richard, he was 24, that came into uni and was a social chair. While we were at uni, he managed to see a psychiatrist um, and, and get himself a prescription for Ritalin. I'm pretty sure Richard just knew the right things to say to, to get what he needed. There was a point in time um, that Richard wasn't able to get and renew his prescription for Ritalin, 
um, it, it was probably about two weeks that he wasn't taking. Um, and because he was so addicted, he, he just couldn't control it. Um, he ended up committing suicide. So um, he had hung himself in his bedroom. As the trend continues, it is likely that usage will filter into the high school system. Debates are now surrounding whether taking study drugs is a form of cheating, similar to the doping issues faced in sport. So there is much discussion that needs to be had and policy to be implemented in the future to control this issue.